Good morning, and welcome to worship on this, we were just trying to find the word beautiful, enchanting, a a little ominous maybe, the thunder booming as we come in. We are so grateful to be together in worship today, whether you are here with us in person or joining us online as we continue our Advent journey with our theme, Those Who Dream. We would invite you to take a look at the announcements of the bulletin. Uh, Make sure your calendar is up to date with all of our dates coming up. Uh, But wanted to highlight a few. This coming Wednesday night, December 13th at 7 p.m., we will have a healing and wholeness service here in the sanctuary. This is a service where we pause and turn our attention to those who find this to be a season of grief, Uh, Those who are walking a difficult path, knowing that it is especially hard around the holidays. So we are actually going to have a service of rending of cloth, uh, which is rooted in the biblical tradition of lament and grief. We will rend our cloth together as we lament, as we cry, as we celebrate the presence of God being with us always and in all ways. We would ask that you come be a part of this service, either to support somebody who perhaps is in a particular difficult time, to just have a season of quiet or pausing in your Advent journey, or perhaps you too are in a difficult time. Uh, We also will have a cookie bake on uh, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Kathleen is helping to organize the details of that. Thank you, Kathleen. And then later on in the afternoon at 4 p.m. is our parents' night out. So parents of elementary school kids, you are invited to leave your children with us as you go do some shopping or maybe a nice holiday dinner, something that you want to do on your own. We're going to have a pageant rehearsal, pizza and games, and then pickup will be around 8 p.m. We are going to need some volunteers, so if you might be willing to stay and help us, especially help us the next morning for the pageant, uh, we would be thankful. So just send either Susan or I a note if you wouldn't mind staying for the event. Um, And then our youth Christmas party is going to be December 17th at 5 p.m. We'll meet in the Hebron House, and we are looking forward to that event. And then our Christmas Eve schedule will be a family service at 10 a.m. on December 24th here in the sanctuary. And then our evening service will be a candlelight service with lessons and carols in the sanctuary. Xiao Ying will be joining us in the morning, and Philip will be with us in the evening. Are there other announcements? I know Kathleen mentioned Christmas cards. Would you share that with us, please? <laughs> It's this time of year where um, you can order Christmas cards from me, AKA Card Ministry. And I have several samples. This year we're featuring the Holy Family in different guises as in different backgrounds. And I have a variety of sayings you could put on the front or on the inside. So see me after church if you're interested. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other announcements from the community? Friends, let us turn our hearts and attention to God as together we come before God in worship. Yes, sorry, one more. Thank you, Peggy. (laughs) That's good. Um, Sorry, Um, this is from Will. Um, He has to work this morning, so um, just a message for, um, thanks for those who came out Mm. to clean up the highway yesterday. Um, Nothing says happy, Merry Christmas like a clean highway. So um, uh, thanks to everybody that came. We collected 12 bags of trash and the usual car parts. And um, (laughs) thanks to everybody and we'll see you in the spring. Excellent, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. We're lifting up a word of gratitude to all who came together, part of our SWAT team to help clean up Route 40. We are indeed grateful. Let us lift our hearts as we turn our attention to God in worship.
Good morning. John the Baptist said, prepare the way. So, family of faith, how do we prepare our minds for worship? We silence the inner critic. We let go of busy thoughts. We make space for God to speak. How do we prepare our hearts for worship? We bless all emotions. We feel what we feel. We open ourselves up to be moved. How do we prepare our bodies for worship? We take in the scent, sight, and the feel of this space. We breathe in God's mercy. We exhale God's love. How do we prepare our souls for worship? We bring our full selves into this space. We wear our hearts on our sleeves. We trust that even now, God is here. Family of faith, what we practice in worship, we must live out in our daily lives. So prepare the way. Let us worship the holy God. And now let's sing verse two, verse two of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It's number eight in, I'm sorry, number 88 in the purple hymnal.
In Jesus Christ, God seeks to smooth those places made rough by sin. With humility and hope, let us make our confession. Holy God, I wish that peace was something I could buy. I wish that peace could be ordered in a subscription service, found on a map, or downloaded in an app, or voted for on a ballot. I wish that peace was as easy as a one-time choice when I was feeling my best. However, what I have found is that peace involves everyday decisions over and over, whether or not I am feeling my best. So today I confess, in front of this community of faith, that I need your help in this Advent season. Prepare the way for greater peace and teach me how to be a part of it. May God forgive you. May God's guiding hand surround you. May you know comfort. May you know peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. well with your soul. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Please take this moment to look around at one another as we exchange signs of peace. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ. And to our friends who worship from home, may our peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Peace of Christ.
I now would like to invite our children to come on down for our time with all God's children. How good to see you today. Come on down. And I love the rainbow dress. How nice. And I love your heart. Look, it goes different directions. Very nice. I love your heart and I love your heart. I have a question for the both of you. Have you ever had a dream? Have you ever had, have you ever woken up in the morning and remembered a dream that you had? Let me go for it. Yes. Do you, you remember? A superpower. I love that. Hey. I love that. You're an anamorph in your dreams. That's amazing. No, hold on right there. Let's hear it now from Maeve. Let me hear your dream. Mm. It is called a nightmare. Have you ever had a nightmare, do you think? You have? All the time. I have had nightmares before, too. I love what Quinn said. Quinn said, well, we all have dreams. And I think that's true. Maybe not all of us remember as well dreams we have when we're sleeping, but we do all have dreams. Dreams that we have for our life. Dreams that we have for the world. And we believe that God has dreams for us. But I think that sometimes we do learn a little bit about dreams of our lives by the dreams we have at night. Yes, Ms. Quinn. Yes. Ooh, daydreaming. But so when something bad happens, it makes you wake up. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So she mentions that she's got a dream catcher and she's catching those dreams. And she wonders if maybe that makes them happen less. Now, we're going to actually continue this conversation in Sunday school when Miss Susan is going to show you a video, maybe from a movie you've seen before called Tangled. And you're going to watch a video where they sing about how they all have a dream. And I wish we could watch it with, we had time for us all to watch it because some of them are some peculiar dreams that would surprise you. But it reminds us that we all have dreams. And part of our journey is to learn what is our dream for the world. So let us pray. Good, gracious God. Your, oh, that's beautiful. Her dream is to find her magic. May it be so. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give thanks for the dreams that you have for us, the dreams you have for this world, and for the ways that you have placed us in this world to help bring those dreams to life. Help us to see the dreams within our hearts. And all God's children said, Amen! And you may follow Miss Susan out. And now for the um, prayer for illumination. God of peace, we must admit there are a million things on our minds. We would like to be as focused as John the Baptist, preparing the way, gathering the crowd, spreading the word of your arrival. Maybe then we'd know peace. However, more often than not, we're a swirling compilation of grocery lists, text messages, emails, and over-reference to-do lists. So today, we ask for your help in preparing the way. Could you start with our ears and then maybe move to our hearts? We'd like to hear you more clearly. Maybe then we'll know peace. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. The Old Testament reading today is from the book of Isaiah. It's chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. Comfort, oh, comfort my people, 
says your God, speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his, his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Bless be the word. Amen. Our gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of Mark, where we will spend much time in this coming uh, lectionary cycle. It is believed by most biblical scholars that Mark was the first gospel to be written. And both Matthew and Luke had Mark in their own telling and writing of the gospels. And so it's interesting to notice how in Mark's gospel, the gospel begins not with the birth of a baby, not with a journey to Bethlehem, and not with an immaculate conception. No, Mark's gospel begins with these words, that it is time to turn. Listen now for the word of the Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever tried to tell somebody about a dream that you had. It often goes like this. Let me tell you about the dream I had last night. You were in it, only you didn't look like you. And we were at your mother's house, only it didn't really look like your mother's house. The walls were pink and there was like no roof. Anyways, I don't really remember what we were doing, but all of a sudden my hair started falling out and I realized I forgot my shoes. <laughs> to you, the dream is real and so clear. You're eager to go and tell all about it. But then 
as you start to try to get the words out and relay the details and plot lines, it ends up sounding confusing, and if we're being honest, a little crazy. It's hard for the listener to really feel the dream in the same way as you, and it's hard for you to capture the realness of something that really wasn't real at all. Telling somebody else about your dream then usually also prompts some kind of decoding of what might be buried within your subconscious. You and your companion are quick to discern why it is you saw somebody that you haven't seen in years, or why it is that you're having these reoccurring dreams of horrors like forgetting your sermon on a Sunday morning. Not that any preachers had that dream before. And of course, we do this interpretation work as an attempt to decipher, is there something we need to see? Is there some kind of message about our life that we need to hear? Are there signs that are appearing of broken relationships that are in need of repair or maybe that we need to let go of? Is there something that we need to see about our way of being in the world, our fears, our angers, our anxieties. But this is what makes dreams so mysterious, isn't it? How they can feel so familiar and yet also so new and unrecognizable. How they can make total sense and not make any sense at all. And how dreams can be so clear in the heart but then really hard to get out through words in explanation of details. And then perhaps most bizarre of all are those moments when we rise in the morning and we do realize that there is something, something that we are in need of. We are in need of a turning, a turning of some kind from a path that we are on. Now, I imagine that if you had been among those in the crowd who went down to the banks of the River Jordan to be baptized by John, you may have felt a little bit like you were in a dream. Because you see, on the one hand, it would have felt very familiar to you. The act of baptism, the confession of sins, was a tradition of the time. Remember, O Christians, baptisms did not originate with Jesus. It did not begin with Christians or John the Baptist. No, indeed, the word repentance literally means to turn. And people were accustomed to going down to the river to be baptized when they were in need of a turning of some kind in their life or faith. But as you arrive at that water's edge, despite this ingrained tradition for you, almost immediately it would have started to feel a little unfamiliar and quite frankly, bizarre. I mean, what would you make of this man who is there eating locusts and wild honey? He's dressed in camel's hair and a leather belt. And did you hear him right? Is he saying, is he warning that somebody is coming? Somebody who's more powerful than he? And did he say that this one who is coming is going to baptize with the Holy Spirit instead of water? What does that mean? Indeed, it would have felt familiar and yet also something very different than what you had experienced before. But then as you come out of the waters and you go back home, you realize that you're feeling something, something that is very real to you. And as you try to get the words out and tell those that you love or know about it, you realize you're having a hard time capturing the details of helping them to see this thing that you're feeling, that you're seeing, because what you're feeling is a turning. A turning from this path that you had been on, telling you to go. To go down this new path and to follow the one who comes to prepare the way of the Lord. 
And those who know you and really love you might be a little worried about you for many reasons, but among them, because they know that this comes with risk. Already there is tension building, political tensions, religious tension. I mean, he's quoting the words straight out of Isaiah's text. If you're from Jerusalem and you've gathered there on the banks and you hear your prophet's words being spoken, and now you've come back saying you're following this one who is coming, it will be dangerous for you. And yet you know that for some reason you have to go. You have to go and risk everything to follow this one who comes to prepare the way of the Lord. To follow our dreams, to turn and to prepare a new way, might mean that we do have to enter into some risk. That we might have to do those hard things. We might have to finally have that difficult conversation with a family member. We might have to finally throw out the alcohol and say that this last time will be the last time. We might have to finally go to therapy and not just say that we will. We might have to leave our job or go back to school. We might have to unpack the wounding that happened to us so long ago. But what we hear in this passage, what we hear in this text, what is building right here at the very beginning of the gospel is telling us that if we truly want to transform our lives, if we want to repent, to turn, we need to be willing to do that hard work of coming out of the waters, ready to follow the one who comes to prepare the way of the Lord. And this is true, of course, not just in our individual journeys of faith, but it's true for our journey together as a church, that we too might need to turn and start down a path that is going to mean a lot of risk. Is there anything that you can see in our life or ministry that requires some attention for us to pay attention to? Are there places that we know that the work ahead is not going to be easy? But there is something telling us that if we are first and foremost a church, a church that has come to proclaim the good news of our gospel, that we need to go. That we need to go and follow the one who comes to prepare the way of the Lord. I was in a meeting with a colleague earlier this week, and she shared with me a quote by Ed Friedman that says, no chronic issue is ever resolved without an acute phase. So when faced with chronic issues, create an acute situation. I think so often we find ourselves stuck in chronic issues because we are afraid of that acute situation. We know how hard it's going to be. Most of the time it is painful, confusing, disorienting. But if we're serious about repentance, about turning, then we must turn with a bold act of faith and follow the one who comes to prepare the way of the Lord. As we have been reflecting on our dreams, I was reminded of a story that I was told by a family member of mine in a dream that she had that completely changed the trajectory of her life. She was in an extraordinarily painful place in her life, feeling alone, isolated, hopeless. She had attempted to take her own life by suicide. But then she had this dream. And in this dream, as real as anything as she had ever experienced in her entire life, she saw herself being held in the loving embrace of God. And when she woke, she was transformed. Like coming out of the waters of the River Jordan, she was renewed with this bold act of faith, and she took the first step that she needed to take to make an acute change in her life. And it was hard, make no mistake, it was really hard, the hardest thing she has ever done in her life, but it released her from the darkness that she had been in for so long. This dream was pivotal for her, And still to this day, it sustains her. 
Now, I'll be honest with you and say, I'm not sure I have ever had a nighttime dream quite like that before. But in hearing her testimony, I believe with every fiber of my being that it was real and that it was a divine encounter, one that inevitably saved her life. And like those early disciples, it encouraged her to leave behind this path that she was on and to follow, to follow the one who came to prepare the way of the Lord in her life. This Advent might just be that time of turning for you. Whatever it is that you need to turn from, those things that gripped you, distract you, haunt you, those things that wear you down and leave you more hungry than fed, maybe this is the advent when you actually pay attention to the things that have either been appearing in those nighttime dreams, those messages of the night, or in the dreams that you have for your life, the world, the brokenness, the lament that you have been seeing, this feeling that something's just not quite right, and you know that it is time to go, to go and to prepare the way of the Lord. It is time to turn, to turn from the toxicity, to turn from the values that are culture-driven rather than God-inspired, to turn from the relationships who are trying to tell you who you are when the only thing that matters is whose you are and you are a beloved child of God. Maybe this is the advent when you turn from everything and anything other than loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, and loving your neighbor as yourself. I don't know. Maybe this is the advent where you actually just love yourself. Oh, dreamers, maybe this is the year in which your actions, your turning, your transformation prepares the way of the Lord to break open in your life and in the world. For the sake of the church, may it be so. Amen. Please remain standing as we affirm our faith. 
we believe that a voice cried out in the wilderness, saying, Prepare the way of the Lord. And so we show up in church pews on cold, blustery days. We march toward justice. We roll up our sleeves. We plant trees for our children. We make art. We choose hope. We gather at the table. We set an extra plate. We sing loudly with joy. We share stories and wisdom. We celebrate children. We fall together. We rise together. We love together. We do all these things because we believe that God loves us so much that God shows up here. So we prepare and prepare for that next beautiful day. May it be so. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. One of the great joys of belonging to a community of faith is the time we take each week to hold one another for prayer, for knowing that as we journey through the week, we are praying with each other, we are praying for one another. This week, we were praying for Kyle, uh, who unexpectedly did spend at least one night, full night, in the hospital for a severe infection, borderline sepsis. And so we give thanks, Kyle, that you are here and in person, and we continue to pray for you as we know you still have some recovery ahead. How are you? She's okay. She's okay, and she is here. <laughs> thanks be to God. Are there other prayers for our community this day? We can lift up. How can we pray for you? Thank you. Um, this week, um, a friend that I know, her son committed suicide, and suicide is just on my heart right now for mm. the world. Just prayers for people really struggling, mm. especially this time of year. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you for naming that with bold courage. And we pray for your friend and for all who have walked that path. Thank you. Are there other prayers? Um, I shared last week um, that we are organizing rides for Mary Lou. Uh, Mary Lou is doing well. Uh, Janice and I had a lovely visit with her a couple weeks ago, um, and she's going to start coming to worship, um, but it would be an, a wonderful opportunity for us to help her get here. So if you would be willing, we do have a sign up. We'll be circulating around, and we would be deeply thankful. You'll notice a QR code on, in your bulletins that you can use that will take you straight to the sign-up sheet. Are there other prayers? Trusting that God hears prayers we speak out loud and the prayers we hold in our hearts, let us bow our heads as we come before God. Oh, good and gracious God, we give thanks for the ways that you burst open in our hearts every single day, for the reminder of newness and creation, for all life beginning with the sunrise. We pray, oh God, that today we might pause in our Advent journey to open our eyes open wide to our lives, to the world around us, to those places that we see hunger, grief, loss, lament, to look straight on at hatred and those things that bring such anger, to not be afraid that we shy away from it or turn away from it, but instead to look to look for buried within are the signs of how you have come showing us that the Lord prepares a way and that now is the time to turn. And so we pray, O oh God, that you be with our bold feet moving forward, our caring hands reaching out, our eyes for seeing and our ears for listening as we seek to be that way for another and for our own lives. O oh, gracious God, we know that there is so much grief and loss all around us. For those who are grieving the loss that was taken through suicide and all of the questions that leaves in its wake, we pray for Peggy and for Will and the passing of Will's mother. Gracious God, we pray for those who have been lost and are now found, for friends and for companions who are in our journey. Help us, O oh God, to be that fierce source of love, remembering that you have given us each a gift 
of sharing this unconditional love that you have with us by the way that we love one another. And so, oh God, help us to love. Help us to sit uncomfortably in our questions, knowing that very rarely there are any really good answers for the true horrors that we see on TV, in the news, in the headlines. Help us, O oh God, to be that river of peace, breathing in a spirit of your abiding presence. Gracious God, we give thanks for this church, this church that is so fierce in their faith, who are ready to take bold action, who move forward with wisdom and dedication. We are grateful for the larger connectional church for which we belong with the presbytery. And, O oh God, we give thanks for the ways that you are showing us that there is a time amongst us that is showing us that it is time to turn and to change and to be your presence in the world. Into the silence, O oh God, we would lift up prayers that we bring on our hearts this day. Oh, gracious God, we are here. We are here standing on the banks of the River Jordan. Our feet are in the water. We feel it all around us that you have called us to be here for just such a time as this. Help us with courage to enter into that first step of an acute phase in which we are ready to make change, change trusting in you who guides us forward. We lift all this to you knowing we do not journey alone, for we come together with our siblings in Christ all around the world who offer the prayer that Jesus offers, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Come with peace and renewal in the ever-abiding light of Christ. Bring the work of your hands and the gifts of your lives as an offering of praise.
We give you thanks, Holy One, for all good things, for this universe and for the earth itself, for creatures and plants, for water and food, for light and darkness, for Jesus, our brother who enlarged our vision, and for the Holy Spirit who comes to us in baptism and moves in our midst with the power to lead us to you. Turn our offerings to your good will and turn us always to you in gratitude. Amen. go out into this world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Go this day in the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. <laughs>